Hello and welcome to our series covering Kubernetes. This time I will introduce and define some basic terminology you will encounter on your journey into the Kubernetes world. As mentioned previously, Kubernetes has a steep learning curve. All too often this begins with the terminology being used. So if you know what these terms are referring to, their relevance should become clearer for you. So let's get started with the pod. Pods are the basic building block of Kubernetes and are used to define the application. They may consist of a single container or more usually multiple containers. A pod may be deployed onto a single worker node or onto multiple nodes within a Kubernetes cluster. The composition of the pod is defined by the application's deployment definition, which I will introduce later. The pods themselves are very often require extra configuration in order to work correctly, and these are known as the secrets and config map. So let's start off with secrets. Secrets represent sensitive data that you want to manage access to. By default, they use base64 encoding, so aren't really a security feature. Instead, they prevent casual observers from accessing this data. Next up, there's the config map. This is just a resource definition that can be loaded into a pod. It can be a key value pair, a body of text, or even a binary file. Config maps can be application specific, or they can be settings that are shared across many pods. They are read-only, meaning that the pods themselves cannot alter a config map. However, there is more to deploying an application than simply defining which containers to execute. What about how to deploy it? Or how does it communicate with your customers? Or what to do if a node goes down, etc.? This is where these next terms enter into the picture. So let's take a look at this, starting with deployment. This instructs Kubernetes how to deploy your application. For example, you may specify that your application is deployed as two replica pods, each consisting of a single container. In this instance, the pods could be split across two worker nodes. In a different deployment, your application may consist of only one pod consisting of two containers. In this instance, the pods will remain on a single worker node because a pod cannot be split across more than one node. The next term we'll cover is the replica set, which is used to ensure an application's desired state is maintained. To do this, the replica set describes the structure of the deployed application. It is the replica set that manages the availability of a predefined number of pods running within the deployment at all times. The replica set process achieves this by starting, monitoring, and restarting pods as needed. But what use is an application that cannot communicate with your customers across the intranet or internet? This is where the service helps by providing the mechanism to expose the application's pod or pods for network access. They may enable network traffic to communicate between pods in the cluster, or maybe to enable communication to or from the external world. So last but not least, there are a couple more terms that you will often hear, which are external resources and stateful set. So let's cover them in the same order, beginning with external resources. This refers to anything that enables containers within a pod to access an external resource such as physical storage, which is handled by the volumes term, or configuration, which is handled by a mixture of config maps and secrets, both of which I have introduced at the start of this video. So the last term we'll cover today is the stateful set. This is used in deployments where there is, for example, a requirement to start pods in a set order or to assign them defined unique identifiers. In other words, this ensures consistent identities are always applied. These identities represent things such as network definitions, storage, etc. Say for example your application consists of a web-based application which is reliant on an underlying database. In this instance, the start process would ensure that the database is up and running prior to starting the web-based application. For now, that is probably enough detail because each of these concepts can become complicated very quickly, so they're best left to be covered individually on another day. Many thanks for taking time out to watch, and be sure to keep an eye out for further instalments in this series. For additional information about Kubernetes, please access the Oracle Linux documentation or Oracle Linux Learning Library. <laughs>